And I'm just going to do a quick intro for, I know we have some other people on here. Um, for the CPA committee, we have Amy Biden for the finance rep. Edwin Matusko is here for Conservation Commission. Um, Diane Kiris. How do you say your last name, Diane? It's tricky. I answer to anything, but it's Chokus. There's a okay. silent H after that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, is here for Park and Rec. Um, Mark Dunn is here for Planning Board. Denise Barstow is here for Hi um, Historic Commission Rep. Um, Andy Morris Friedman is here for as an at large. I'm here for at large, Mary Thayer. And um, Cassandra's not on yet, but I expect Cassandra Gonzalez to join us also as at large. So, um, and is there anyone here for the Housing Authority? Um, we keep hoping. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna move things right along. We do have somebody coming on, um, David Eisenthal, about 8.30 to help us learn more about bonding and how it might pertain to some of the discussion tonight. Um, but if anyone feels I'm rushing, then please, you know, speak up, because I certainly don't want to do that either. Uh, real quick, um, we'll start with the minutes from March 21st, 2022. Does everyone have a copy? Yep, the, uh, the printer fucked up, uh, screwed up a little bit, but I got most of it. <laughs> Does anyone want to make a motion to accept them? I will. Who is that? Motion to accept the minutes. I'll second that. I think that was Andy. Yes, yes it was. Andy and Edwin? Yeah. Any yeah. discussion? No. Thank All you, Mark. Those... Yes. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstained? Thank you. <clears throat> uh, thank you. I um You're I wonderful. can't take all the all the credit. Mary gave me a few good edits, so. Uh, it was. It was Hi. Um, <laughs> on. Um, treasurer's report. I'll pull this up. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and share this. It's probably the easiest way just so people know where we're at. And I can certainly pull this up. I'm gonna make it a little bigger. I can certainly pull it up if I need to also. Um, so right now in the cemetery or in the CPA funds, we have open space set aside as 90,600. Historic set aside, 14,007. His housing set aside, 183,000. We try to reserve 500. General availables, 1,499,000. So 287,000 2, is available. We do still have some reserve for expenditures. This is as of 6.30. There's been about 44,000 collected in July, and there's still gonna be some more collected in um, August that isn't posted yet. Um, but that gives us a good idea. And then there'll be potential clawbacks of about another 49,000. Um, Mary, was resolution that in Boston on that extra 20 million? It didn't get passed because um, of the people pointing out that if there's a certain amount of surplus, it has to be returned to the taxpayers. So. I don't know where that stands. I think if things are still up in the air on how it, how what is available to be spent is now going to be used. But the rates, last year we did get 100% um, match from the year before, um, but we hadn't gotten that for a while. We'd like 63% the year before. But some of that increase was, there was 10 million put in it, but also um, they doubled the fee from 25 to $50 at the registry. So there should be more um, funds available than has been in the last few years. What that means for Hadley, we'll see. Um, but we, you know, we should, we should get around 300,000 just with what the town collects. So we'll see how much of a match the state makes on top of that. So there's, there's where we're at right now. I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, 
Next order of business is to elect for the new year, um, fiscal year 23, the chair, vice chair, secretary, and treasurer. Um, does anyone who has a position already want to continue, or is there anyone that would like to do um, a position that hasn't been doing one? I would like to hand off the secretary role if there's someone that can be more present. I have a lot going on right now. As everyone jumps up, I want to be secretary. Yeah. <laughs> if we were in person, we could do it. We could draw straws. Andy, I know you had mentioned at one time you, you would be willing to do minutes. Is that something you're still interested in? or uh, That was before I became president of my synagogue. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> well, that's a... Um, I nominate a Amy so, so she has to stay on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, under I understand this. I mean, I tried to do that with the finance uh, committee and I didn't have any takers on the, on the secretary spot either. <laughs> yeah. That's the hard one. Nobody, no, no takers. And uh, I'd love to help, but I won't be here. So I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm willing to continue on of chair if no one else wants to, to jump in. Um, and I would be happy to have you continue. Thank you. Yeah. I second that. Mark, would you be willing to do minutes today and then we'll revisit this? Um, yeah. We can tell Andy, Andy that, <laughs> that he was unanimously. Serves me right. <laughs> no, I mean uh, Andy Kl Klopacki, sorry. Oh, 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 ah, perfect. If you're not here to defend yourself, you get the short straw. <laughs> All right. I second okay. his nomination. <laughs> Should we? Um, and Yeah, we can revisit Stefano's that. Stefano's not here either. Should we vote next meeting, do you think, or... Um, and vote for your chair since yeah. we have a first and a second. Yeah. And I think um, I think that Cassandra wants to continue as treasurer, so I think we could vote her. Um, Andy Morris Friedman, would you be willing to be vice chair um, and just help out? Sure. If if people would like that, Andy's been great with willing to help people with fill out applications. So um, it'd be nice to... If, if nobody else wants to, then I'll do Okay, thank you, Andy. And we appreciate... I nominate Andy Morris. I nominate Andy Morris. A heartbeat, a heartbeat yes, away. A okay. How are you feeling, Mary? Are you feeling okay these days? Me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I'll last. <laughs> okay, then I'll do it. <laughs> Good. All right, so does someone want to nominate the slate, which is Mary Thayer Chair, Andy Morris Friedman Vice Chair, and Cassandra Treasurer? I would uh, nominate that. I'll okay. second it. Any other discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? <coughs> And then we'll do the secretary next time. It's important. Um, applications. We're going to start with uh, um, probably the, maybe the quickest one, um, Hockenham Cemetery Fence. Is Alan Weinberg, do you want to? Um... Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. I apologize. My video camera seems, doesn't seem to be working on my new computer, so... Uh, you don't have to look at me that. Let me know if you're And I said to her, I don't know if it was working in a pre meeting. If, if you want to um, mute yourself, if you're not actively talking, that might be helpful. Um, okay. Go ahead, go ahead, Alan. Okay, well, thank you for having me again. I'm here as uh, on behalf of the cemetery committee. Uh, currently, we have three projects uh, that are being funded by CPA funds. 
one of them is the Russellville Cemetery gravestone restoration. The other is the North Haven <coughs> gravestone restoration. And the third is the Hockenheim fence project, um, which is why I'm here today. But I just did want to mention some, that the Russellville Cemetery project is done and uh, we, we can return uh, $15,810 to the CPA this year. The North Hadley Cemetery uh, project is almost done and we expect to be able to return $29,510, um, although we may not, it may not be done before town meeting this fall. So um, we still want to hang on to that for a bit, but we should be returning um, that, those monies um, before the end of the year. <clears throat> the Hockenheim Fence is a little bit of a different story, unfortunately. Um, we have already received $83,000 of CPA funds for uh, replacing the fence, uh, the stone wall with a, with a granite post and chain fence. Um, we went out to bid. We only had one bid come in during the summer, and it exceeded the uh, available um, CPA funds, and, but we decided to go ahead with a portion of the project, the main portion, which is the removal of the old wall and replacing it with the granite posts. We were not, we decided not to go ahead for the moment uh, with the bid package. One involved um, um, fixing up the uh, turf between the fence and the road so the cars could park there in a little bit um, safer fashion by installing a reinforced turf material there. And the other alternate, uh, alternate that we are not proceeding with at the moment is the construction of a commemorative pillar made out of uh, the old uh, uh, trap rock stone from the former wall. So uh, we are proceeding, um, the project's underway. We expect that the new fence will be in, hopefully by the end of the year, maybe it, it all depends on when we get the granite, it may be next spring. But we would like to uh, complete the project by doing the uh, other, the, that's why I'm here to ask for supplemental funding for the project in the amount of $25,000, uh, which uh, will, allow us to <clears throat> add the alternates back into the project. And that's, that's basically, I think it, I think I did forward a, um, a write up um, of it. And uh, the, the um, package that I sent around uh, includes the design of the uh, pillar and also the reinforced turf, if you're interested in looking at the details of that. Yes, thank you, uh, Alan. I thought that the information was fairly complete and uh, descriptive. Can I just back up and just ask you again how much you expected to return for Russellville? I was trying to scribble notes in the dark. 15810 Okay, thank you. Yeah, the original uh, funds approved was 30000 so we spent okay. about half of it. Great. And the same, and with North Hadley, the original amount was sixty thousand. We'll be spending about thirty one thousand and returning about twenty. I think it's twenty nine thousand five hundred and ten. We don't have the final number on that yet because we're not finished. And if if uh, if you're granted the <coughs> additional, additional funding, do you, have you spoken to the contractor? Do they think they could complete it all? This year, or uh, well, we we haven't talked to them. We we actually shouldn't okay. talk to them once we have money. Um, gotcha. Gotcha. But, uh, it's with it's it's um, they did give us a price in the original bid, uh, which was uh, back a while. And unfortunately, we can't just say we'll do it at that price. We have to take whatever price they'll they'll do it for, or we may right. even have to go bid again. Uh, so there's no, we don't know exactly what it'll be. We're using those numbers that they gave us and adding some uh, contingency and inflation 
uh, so we, we are hopeful that, and if we don't, if we get another twenty five thousand dollars from the from the you folks in the town, and we and it still comes in high, I don't think we will come back for more. Well, maybe we'll do one of them, one of the alternates. Thank you. Andy. Oh, Mark, were you done? Yes, I, I am. I'm sorry. Um, Alan, of the of the uh, the reinforced parking area and the monument, do you know which one you, you would pick? Well, the way we, we did it in the original bid, we picked the we actually picked the um, reinforced turf first, as you know, as the first alternate. The reason is because it would be nice to do it while they're doing the fence. It's right next to the to the fence. The pillar we could do any time. Um, and uh, even though it's, you know, I think it's nearer to our hearts, perhaps, to have that pillar done. But if we, if we, um, th there may be other options for that pillar if we, if we can't do it in this, in the next several months. There's no other pill options for the, for the turf. And if we don't do it while they're working out there, it, it probably doesn't make sense to try to do it afterwards. So I guess my my answer, my answer to my question is, if I had to choose between the two right now, and I had to do one, I would do the turf. Right. right. Would you store the um, the uh, the stones on the site? Have you yeah, we are doing that now. Oh, okay. All right. Well, all your projects have been exemplary up till now. Uh, we couldn't hope for a better applicant or a better outcome, in my opinion. Uh, and I support it completely. Mary. Yeah. Um, hey, uh, Alan, I was, uh, have you spoken to the DPW so that when they're plowing snow or sanding or something, they don't wreck whatever you do during this uh, reconstruction right now? Well, Gary Berg, Gary Berg's been involved in the project and we've also coordinating with the water uh, people because uh, one, one of the things that this pro project is will be doing and, and, and we do have the money for this, is to replace the water line uh, that, mm -hmm. that uh, serves the, uh, um, the cemetery uh, because the water line actually is right where the fence is. And so that has to be replaced. So we have been coordinating with DPW about uh, what's going on out there, yeah. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, hey, uh, Alan, I know that the um the electric company is going to do something about the mono they're going to change the the high tension wires that's not going to affect you guys is it no nope, that's further uh, north of us okay good thank you any other questions or comments for now just i didn't say this at the beginning what we do we have two meetings this one and then one in two weeks and what we do with this one is just have the projects presented, discuss them, ask questions, and then that gives all of us a chance to think about things and follow through on anything we still would like some more information on. And then mm -hmm. in a few weeks, we'll actually vote if we recommend um, the projects go forward or not to town meeting. So, yeah, I, um, are you prepared to, or you or somebody from the committee is prepared to sell this idea at town meeting, right, Alan? Of course, yep. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, and when is your next meeting? In September twenty sixth in two weeks. Okay, I'll be I'll be there. Okay. okay good. Anybody, if any further information anybody needs, just let me know. Okay, good. Yeah, Alan knows the drill by now. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, I, Alan. Anyone I, else? There's or? no further questions, Mary uh, and and uh, members. Uh, I have another meeting. It's actually the Russell School Building Committee. I have to. Uh, so I'll have to say goodbye um, and join that other meeting. Thank you, Alan. Okay, thanks for the good work. Thank you, Alan. Um, we have Alex Billadu here who put in an application um, regarding his tobacco bar now. And Alex, why don't you unmute yourself and tell us about um, your project? Yes, hi. Um, been trying to uh, keep my barn standing for a few years now. Um, my long-term goal and intent was to see tobacco growing on that property again and hung in that barn uh, as it was intended. And as the years pass, it seems to be more 
of an outreach that I can undertake. And somebody had advised me through the historical society to reach out to the CPA to see if it was something that um, could be supported in those means. So that's what I did. Denise, do you want to um, talk a little bit about the Historic Commission's view on this? Yeah, we wrote a letter of support of this project. Um, tobacco is a really important part of our uh, agricultural heritage here in the Pioneer Valley and in Hadley. Um, and we'd like to see this project funded. And I know that it's different because it's a private um, property, but that's something that CPA does allow for. Right. Um, uh, excuse me, Mary, um, if, if you don't mind, I would like to ask Alex a few questions. Is that okay? Of course. Yep, that's why we're here. Okay, good. Um, Alex, uh, why should the town of Hadley's taxpayers' money be used to support your tobacco barn? Well, my view on that is simply the historical um, view and how it's been a tremendous uh, agricultural um, means of life, really, for residents that have been long term in the valley and especially Hadley. Um, everybody that I have grown up with has parents, grandparents, and great grandparents that have done it. And um, I've always respected it. And it has led me to respect that hard work and labor that goes into it. And I personally would like to see it continue as it uh, still is prevalent in the society. Okay, now, uh, if, if we decide to bring this to town meeting, are you prepared to defend your actions? And what do we tell the people that have worked on their barns and paid for it out of, with money out of their own pocket? Uh, what, do we, what do we say to them? Because you're going to be using taxpayers' money. You're in, your intent is to use taxpayer money. And uh, for a private entity, that's a really, that's a big stretch. I'm sorry. Um, it's a it's a huge stretch to bend the rules a little bit to to fit your uh, your your description, and I just have a really hard time about using taxpayer money, public money, to fix a private uh, project. You, can you address that? I can absolutely fully understand. And I, I had this exact same conversation with a uh, local farmer today um, on the property who viewed the barn as I discussed with him um, recently about reaching out to the CPA and his thoughts were the same, but at the same time, he was excited because he wants to grow it and hang it in that barn um, as the top of the mountain um, the soil is different than at the bottom. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the moisture and the, the way the sun works up there. And I, that's been my biggest fear. Uh, ha having made this application is the guys that have uh, been farming and do this as a hundred percent of their income uh, is what their thoughts would be. So I, I can completely understand, and I, I'm not really sure how to explain it. Um, I, I was just in the hopes that uh, this could be something that the community, community could see as a benefit, um, not just myself. Hmm. Um, the, uh, I don't know how to say this, so I guess I'm going to be blunt about it. And just I, I apologize in advance, Alex, but if this motion passes, there's going to be a line out the door of farmers coming to the CPA for fixing up their tobacco sheds. And I don't know if this is the right way to go about doing it. I don't know what is. And 
I'm sorry, but that's the way I feel about it. Um, I don't know if, if anybody else on the committee has feelings about it or not, but I just, uh, you're, and you're going to have to defend it at town meeting. And I wish you an awful lot of luck if you do. Uh, that's all I get to say. Thank you. No, I, I can more than under, I, I appreciate the, the comment, Edwin. Thank you. You're welcome. Mark? Yeah. yeah, thank you, Edwin, for for saying what was kind of the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. I was wondering earlier if there was a way to distinguish this from just taxpayers helping a private venture, and I wondered, would it have a different look if, say, in the off-season he did some kind of agritourism and said, here's our historically restored, you know, barn. And this is the hit, you know, if you put some, I don't know, some educational plaques on the, on the, on the walls and, you know, made it open to agritourism. I, I, I don't know. I was just trying to think of ways to make it more than just taxpayer helping a, one farmer out of every other. Mm. Other comments, Amy or Andy, Diane, Denise, Andy? Um, hi, Alex, thanks for coming before our committee. Did I see you today while I was riding my bike up Mount Warner, talking Probably. to somebody about that barn? That was, was me. I, I should have come and said hi, but I wasn't sure it was you. And That's okay. Uh, that's the gentleman I was I was describing who was asking if um, the barn does get fixed, could he um, grow and hang tobacco there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, well, I should have come and said hi. Well, that barn's in pretty rough shape. It is very much so. Yeah. When is it? Uh, when was it built? Uh, the historical commission put it somewhere between uh, 1850 and the early 1900s. I mean, personally, I, I have no idea. It's a pole barn. Um, yeah. which the ones that are left are super rare um, from, from every, everything I've gathered. There's, there's not many left standing and that there's the, the older ones or they're the most cheaply built for that vintage. Do we know if it's the oldest barn in town? Is there a way to find out? That I don't know. I, I wouldn't know how to do that. Because that would be a reason to say this barn as opposed to every other barn uh, sure. in town. So that might be a good argument in your favor. Um, I helped Alex fill out his uh, proposal. Um, and uh, I found him to be very reasonable and cooperative and uh, willing to learn what the CPA rules are and to abide by them. Um, so that's definitely a, a plus in his favor. We also talked about um, signing a covenant, either with the town or with the CPA committee, that if he were to sell the property, uh, the CPA money would be returned to the, uh, to the town. Um, are you still willing to negotiate that kind of an agreement? Uh, to a point, yes. I, I personally wouldn't um, want to hand that down to my child. Um, I, I view everything that I have now as something that I can hand over to her um, in the future. And I, I wouldn't want her to be burdened with uh, any, any kind of debt. I, my goal in life for her is to hand over a lot and not have it be in the negative. <laughs> so that's the only uh, view I've, I've really taken off of um, discussing that with you. Well, if you, um, it's part of the CPA rules that money spent on a, a private project, um, there has to be a conservation restriction, a historical restriction, a public benefit, or a covenant that the money is uh, refunded if the asset is sold. So sure. that's prob probably something we're going to have to insist on okay. uh, as a committee, although we'll have to discuss it. Um, mm -hmm. I think in terms of other farmers lining up, Tell them to get in line. You know, there's an advantage to being the first person to think of something. 
Hmm. You know, and if the stampede happens, we'll just have to deal with it. Um, that's, I think that's a separate issue than whether this particular project is the deserving of town meeting's time. So that's the positive side. The negative side, if you'll allow me to flip flop for a second, is um, there's no way this is going to get through town meeting. <laughs> People are not going to give up their tax money to have you fix your barn. Although town meeting is fickle, sometimes it's insanely generous. It's hard to know. Um, but the question is town meeting's time is also valuable. And should we let town meeting decide if they want to spend their tax dollars on this barn? Or should we save them the discussion and the vote time to town meeting and say, we don't think this is going to, this is going to go. And I flop back and forth on that particular issue. So I don't know what to say. Um, but uh, um, I think you're going to be walking into the lion's den in town meeting if you decide to go forward with this proposal. And I hope you're prepared because town meeting can be kind of cruel sometimes. So, um, so just prepare yourself, gird your loins. <laughs> that's just, that's what I am sense. afraid. I've, I've tried to make it a goal in life is to fly as low on the radar as possible. And, and just even asking this question of the CPA is, uh, made me feel very standoffish. And I, I, I feel like there's others that deserve it more than me. And I'm, I'm not trying to benefit myself. I'm just trying to benefit the town and something that's been here a lot longer than I have. Yeah, there, there are other programs, uh, agricultural funding programs to help farmers uh, with their barns. Uh, maybe if you don't get CPA money, I can direct you to the websites I found to apply for other grants. I, I guess maybe I should have started with uh, how, how this process began for me. Is I, I reached out to uh, the Massachusetts Historical Commission uh, for the whole state, and they are the ones that led me uh, to the CPA uh, in, in a roundabout way, I guess, and reading the CPA stuff got me in touch with the historical commission who then, um, after some time, uh, gave me the recommendation letter and here we are today. Hi. That's it, that's it for me. Thank you, Andy. Amy or Diane, if you wanna. I, Denise, go ahead. Oh, I just had a quick question. What is currently farmed around the barn and are you farming it uh yes i uh, currently i'm growing um squash there thanks i did send your application we have a um coalition for the state that we pay dues to each year to belong to and i did send a copy of this and the school one um and i'll i just got it this afternoon, but I'll be glad to forward this to the committee and to Alex. But um, if you'd like, I, I'll give you a quick rundown of what Stuart Saginaw responded. He sent a bunch of links and articles, so I'll send this out. But um, this article on our website is a great overview of the challenges with historic barns in general. And um, he said the hardest ones are private owned, um, like the tobacco barn. Um, he said the state's anti-aid amendment prohibits you from providing public funds to a private party for private uses, which this project seems to be, but there is a way in, to inject public benefit into this project and make it something that can be funded with public dollars, and that's to have the property owner grant a preservation restriction on this farm to the town, and there's a couple links explaining that more. Um, but he said it takes at least six months to work through the re restriction draft, um, have consultants review it, and then you have to find historic barn restoration companies, um, and then you have to draft an agreement acceptable to the barn owner and the town, um, and he's got a couple articles on that as well. Um, and then he said the actual work, it, historic funds from historic resources need to be done to the Secretary of Interior Standards. Um, and that would need to be done with the work that was done. And that's, um, he's got some information on that. And then you need a contractor that really is, knows what they're doing with historic buildings. Um, so. Um, 
Is there any uh, certification that we need to see if, if, if Mr. Bilodeau wants to fix up his barn? Do we have to see if the contractor is a licensed registered restoration expert or something? We'd have a grant agreement like we've done with some of the other projects that kind of spell out these conditions. Um, some other towns have done what Andy suggested, have the funds repaid to the town, but it's often a period of time, like 10 years or 20 years. It isn't just forever in the future right. um, in terms of the repayment. But the historic preservation is what a lot of, lot of um, towns seem to have done with projects that are privately owned or not, not town owned anyways. Um, and those are all, all things to look into and, and I'll send yeah. for people to take a look at some of the articles and stuff he references, but it's nice mm -hmm. to have their input on it as well. Do you, do you have any sense, Alex, of how many tobacco barns there are in town or any that are similar to yours? Um, as far as the des design of mine, I from just local chat is a uh, four in okay. total. And right, I have barns. I'm not really sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and uh, and uh, when this uh, when Mr. Billado's barn was built, there was a lot of chestnut around, and they would the farmers would cut down the trees, clean up the branches, and. and used the chestnut poles as supports for the barn. So um, that, that you could be right. It could be from the 1800s. I don't know. I'm not going to, I'm not here to say that, but I think Andy's right. You're going to have a really hard time selling this at town meeting, Alex. So that's where I stand on that. Thank you. I, Apologize if this was in the application and I missed it, but uh, if I might ask how long you or your family has owned the property with the barn? I've owned it uh, approximately four years now. Um, I, I've just the barn itself. It took uh, 13 30 yard dumpsters to clean out. Um, it, it was, it was packed. Um, I, I think I'm up to 16 dumpsters on the property alone, just uh, in, in debris and cleanup. And I'm, I'm finally uh, reached the end of uh, mm -hmm. cleanup <laughs> for many, many years of uh, storage and, and dumping, I guess, really. And uh, the, my last big push on that property is, uh, is the tobacco barn. So this isn't a, 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 f a barn that's been in your family for generations or something? No, no it's not. Okay. I was just thinking that could draw criticism from other farmers. They say, well, our family took care of our barns. Well, if you just bought it, you inherited. It. So that could be an argument in your favor that you're trying to save a piece of history. It's not like you've been letting it go. It, that was something you inherited from the purchase. But again, that might buy some votes or it might not. So, Absolutely. I'll Alex, what if we gave you uh, partial funding? I'm not confident um, now that I'm uh, a father as to the amount of finances I used to be able to free up. Um, I'm, it's a different story these days for me for, for a good, better reason <laughs> than uh, trying to save. <clears throat> I think one of the other things that I is something that hasn't been said is what is the alternative? If, if you don't get funding from us and you can't afford to, to fix it on your own, it's going to end up on the ground, right? It, it is. Yes. My insurance company is already after me. Uh, they, they've demanded that I, I board up um, as many openings as I can. And, um, I'm, I'm at risk of losing my insurance from the entire property if, if I don't do something. And the, the next something is just to pull it down. Geez, I wonder if that would have been something that was eligible for like an SBA loan under that uh, PPP program. But 
Anyway, I'm just thinking out loud. Any other questions or comments? I'll send around the link. Um, and Alex, I'll send it to you as well. Um, Thank you. We'll be back in two weeks to talk about it some more and, and vote on it then. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much for coming, and um, you're welcome to stay or you're welcome to go, whatever you'd like to do. Um, our third application, we've got several people here from the school, is for the phase two of Hopkins. And um, whoever would like to speak on that first. Um, yeah, thanks, Mary. This is this is Paul Pfeiffer. Hi, hi everyone. I'm on the school committee. Um, I also have Dr. Annie McKenzie on, and then Chris Desjardins, our, our finance uh, person at the school. I just want to say thanks for um, your past support. We've, I think I've been in front of you now four or five times. You've all supported us several times for the first phase of the athletics project. Maybe just listening to that last conversation, I was to say thanks for your service. That's a tough issue you all are facing, so I appreciated the conversation. Um, so as I mentioned, we're here to talk about the Hopkins athletic fields. Um, we're into our phase two. So that phase one, some of you may remember or have experienced, you all supported several times with funding to, uh, as we prepared the design of phase one of the athletic fields and then the actual construction of the athletic field. So as of last year, we fully completed that project, uh, upwards of about $800,000 spent. And we created a new softball field for girls softball, a new uh, baseball field, and uh, a new multi-use field. We would converted uh, part of the, the farm that the Rexus had been farming for a while, but that the school had owned, the trustees had purchased years ago. We finally converted that to multi-use fields. And then also we had created a, a 2,100 uh, foot long asphalt path that's highly used by the public now. Uh, that was our hope. And and it's been rewarded that every time I go out there, there's, there's lots of folks using it. So as we had mentioned years ago, it's a multi-phase project. So right now what we're coming back to ask for CPA support is for the second phase, which gets us to another uh, girls softball field. So it's a revision. We have a JV and a varsity softball field for the girls. We're going to rearrange the boys varsity baseball field. I don't know. Mark, you said you were out there. I don't know if you noticed, there's quite a hump on it. It's really not a, a safe situation. So now that we've created more space out there in the field and it's been graded, we'll move the boys varsity field 90 degrees. And then we'll finally complete that uh, asphalt path. So there'll be about a, we'll add another 1500 feet. So about a, a 3,600 foot asphalt um, rectangle, essentially an oblong shape out there that uh, folks can use. In addition, uh, since we will be having um, increasing use along the, the houses there, we're proposing to put some netting along to uh, protect uh, fly balls, errant balls from going into people's backyards. And with that, you will have some grading, some new um, irrigation. We'll have a new well out there. It's, it's a lot of, based on all the experts we've talked to, you need to have a good well out there and good ir irrigation. If you can invest the money in the, the seeding, you need to make sure you can support it and it's highly drained soil. So uh, we'll, we already have a new well and pump out there. We're going to add a second to support the large field, field with new irrigation systems. So all told, we'll have completed the final project. We're asking for, I believe the original application is about 1.5 million. Mary, I think you had asked the right question of did we fully factor in inflation? And so based on that last that, that question, um, we did go and we had a school committee meeting just this night, uh, just a, an hour or so ago, and we did re-revise that. So we're asking, I believe now we've, we've gone from 1.4, we've included an inflation factor, and I think it's closer now to a little over 1.6 that we think would be the appropriate amount to consider. Of course, who knows what inflation is going to be when we'd start excuse me, later this year, early next year for the project, but um, that's what we think is most reasonable now. Annie, anything to add? No, I think that was perfect. That amount was, and Mary, again, thank you, and thank you to the CPA members for taking the time, not only to look at this application, but to look at how this application fits into a much longer 10-year capital plan for the school department. It is roughly about... 
I think 12 million all told in FY22 dollars. And so Mary, you and your colleagues did catch the fact that it appeared that the CPA request was actually sitting in fiscal year 24. And so therefore, wouldn't that be based on the inflation factor built into that 10 year plan? Wouldn't that request be closer to 1.7 million? The business manager and I met this afternoon and realized that if the CPA were to recommend this, we were to make a compelling case at town meeting floor and the town decided to fund this. We got the quote that's in the proposal, the detailed price proposal. We got that late uh, toward the end of fiscal year 22. If it were funded in fiscal year 23, rather than as, as Colliers, the person who helped us put together our 10 year plan had suggested increasing essentially an inflation factor of closer to 15%, 7.5 and 23 and 7.5 and 24. Chris and I felt that it was reasonable to just say 7.5. Again, assuming that if, if this project were recommended, if we made a compelling case on town meeting floor, and then we were going out to bid and get every, everything set up for the spring in order to break ground in the summer, we're assuming then that the project, and again, these are estimates with inflation that we did ask experts to assist us with, uh, it would be closer to 1.6, Maybe just to chime in on that, you know, that, that's a big point that Annie mentioned was that um, that building is got multiple pieces to it and it's from the 50s and 60s um, and we've done a good job of maintaining it. So we have talked to the, the Massachusetts School uh, Building Administration about the possibility of, well, frankly, just getting a whole new building. Um, it is you know, 70 years old in, in parts and we're a victim of our own success, right? We maintain it well, uh, it's in pretty good standing. So our chances of actually getting the funds even at 50% of the funds for probably a $25 million, $30 million building are probably pretty small. So that's where we did this alternate route. We hired this, this consultant Colliers to come in and itemize all the things that need to be upgraded. And as Annie mentioned, that's about 12.3 million. So then we looked at, well, how do we, how do, we do this over what time frame? So it's a 10 year time frame. Well, who pays for it? So there's a bit of school choice. So individual school uh, dollars. There's a bit of other funds that we'd use. There's a bit of funds from the, the uh, town the, through the capital uh, planning. And then also there's the fields through hopefully CPA. So this would be part of a larger effort, multi-year effort to really revise the, the school and, and just make it a bit more modern, uh, update it, and um, you know, make it a school that we're going to keep attracting Hadley students and students from around the valley too. And again, building on that, we would be looking this particular project, there's only one thing in our entire plan that would even be eligible for CPA funding, and that's the fields project. We do believe that there's a community benefit, the case that we made in phase one, phase one. We certainly have heard from the community that they appreciate the fields, they appreciate the walking track. And it's also part of a larger goal of ours to um, help the town with cost avoidance. Um, so if we were to go for, um, so part of this larger strategy is, um, looking to upgrade and invest our funding and then ask for funding when we have projects that are eligible for other funding, um, to renovate and to upgrade in order to assist the town in avoiding a much more substantial cost of, uh, new build. Thanks. Edwin? Um, I was just kind of wondering, I've had people come up to me saying, we appreciate everything that the CPA does, but we are also concerned about expanding the budget of the town of Hadley. So now uh, the question I have is, will this add to the school department's budget and about how much if we decide to fund this project? Will this add to the school department's budget? Edwin, just to ask on that, you mean for maintenance? Well, for anything. Well, it, uh, is the budget for the school department going to be bigger because we added the renovation to the fields? I would say no, Edwin, from a maintenance perspective, right? We factored in, we had to increase um, 
our maintenance attention. And that was actually one of the reasons we, we made sure to put in the well and the irrigation system. So that's all automated. So that's not human required. Um, and, um, you know, so we've, we've increased some of our attention to the fields already with the new piece. We'll just extend that to the existing, uh, or I'm sorry, the expanded fields. Um, I mean, it, it, to be honest, in this phase, we're not expanding the total acreage. We're just improving it. So right, in, that, yeah. in, in that regard, it's already maintained. So it's not an increase in maintenance. And then there's what we're asking for are the funds to complete the project. So no, there would be no additional need from the school for the actual construction. Right, because I see according to your application, you're, you're asking for 100% of the uh, money coming from the CPA. Is the school department we are. Some, of, some of its own money? Well, so that's that's a larger picture that we painted at the twelve point three million. Uh, you know, about two million of that we're we're saying will come from the school from school choice. We 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 get funds from students that uh, come from other towns mm -hmm. to attend our school. Quite a quite a few actually. We're a very attractive school district, um, and so that is a major revenue source. We as a school committee can apportion some of that out. We've got a, a, a cap of how much we'll spend. We need to keep some in the bank from a year to year basis, but. We have said we'll, we'll commit some of that over the next 10 years each year for some of these capital campaigns. So from the $12 million perspective, yes, some is coming from school choice. We're asking for CPA to help with the athletic fields. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, I, I, I understand that and I know that. But Amy, maybe you can answer this question. Are the budgets increasing because of our generosity in town? Or not really? I, I wouldn't necessarily say the budgets are increasing, especially on something like this, I, I, uh, on this particular project, because it's already being maintained. If anything, we've been shipping people out to other, like the Young Men's Club and things like that. So with this project, it actually probably saved, or maybe it even was a wash, because we're not sending people um, to different places you know, having to bust them out. I think the fields were an excellent choice. I mean, we already own the property. Mm -hmm. So now we're just going to fix it up. So mm -hmm. I, I don't necessarily think it's it would cost us or in any way. Now, I do have one other question, which was, um, which would cost us in a little bit, was lights. I've had people ask me about lights. Now, the lights would be good is if we had the lights, we could then, I know that, when um, my kids played and they played behind the um, safety complex, uh, like one of the soccer groups, they would bring in lights. They would actually have to bring them in. Um, I know at the other schools, some of them have lights because in the fall it starts to get dark. Um, and I also know some of the club, club soccer teams, they have trouble finding spaces. So maybe if it was after when, when school isn't, in session or they weren't using it maybe it would be something if we had lights we could get places other places to come use our fields just a thought but people have asked me about lights now if we did have lights that would be something <laughs> that probably would increase our budget um mm -hmm. it is just something to think about and i was wondering if you thought about the lights we definitely did, Amy. So before we started the whole phase, the one project, we did a bunch of public meetings. Uh, and that was definitely a question that came up. And, and my, my son, older son went through Hopkins, right, and, and played sports. And, and I know that would have been something that we would have valued. Two reasons I think we didn't do it. Uh, well, three, maybe. One is they're expensive, right? So at that time, you were looking at over a million, million and a half, probably looking at closer to over two, okay. two and a half million. Um, so they're not cheap. Then the second is we got a lot of strong opposition by the abutting neighbors. Um, it, it was a very, those are very bright lights that uh, it's going to really disrupt their evenings. And then the third was, there was a question about how much use you actually get in those evening hours, <clears throat> especially with West Nile restrictions that seem to be more prevalent. Now, I haven't necessarily seen those yet this year, but that is a concern that, you know, oftentimes we're told to end games before nightfall because of West Nile concerns. So we were worried that if you'd have a short season, high cost, uh, you know, neighbors that were unsupportive, we just thought it wasn't worth it to go forward with that. Well, that's great. All, all valid, 
all valid arguments and it's helpful, especially if people ask, I, I can yeah. reply to that. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Diane, do you want to mention some things <clears throat> from the park and rec point of view? Everything that um, all the efforts that everyone's going through to determine these fields, because back in, you know, 19, uh, 90, 1988 or so, I was playing softball on those fields myself. Um, so I appreciate the what the layout over there and what you guys have done for improvement. So that's great. From uh, the park and rec perspective, I'm, we have the softball field that is now... Um, being put out behind the other safety complex down on 47. Um, so hopefully that is going to be getting some great use. Um, I also heard mention about West Nile virus. And uh, we are starting to be aware of um, cases that are occurring. So um, we've informed our coaches about that and haven't uh, necessarily put out um, an edict or a policy on that yet, but are watching that closely too. Is that what you were referring to? And I guess, yeah, and what you thought of the project, um, this project in terms of, you know, from your park and rec perspective or your perspective. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely supportive of that. Yeah, thank you. And Cassandra, I see you're on. Welcome. Um, if you'd like to join in, please do in any of the discussion. Um, thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I apologize. I had saved this as a 7:30 meeting, and then I was a little confused after some technical difficulties. No problem. We're glad you're with us. I um, do. I can say about the fields at this school. Um, I I didn't plan those fields, but my kids do, and my youngest just went into kindergarten, and I know for a lot of kids in Hadley, they. Um, really enjoy their time playing for Hopkins and Hadley Elementary when they're little. So that is important to me as a parent and I'm sure many other parents. Mark, yeah. Um, just a couple while we're in the investigatory stage of, you know, meeting one, um, two things I, I heard touched on earlier one was um i think it was edwin was asking or was just noting that they're asking for 100 percent. and i don't know mary you or someone else could remind me it seems like there's frequently a 10 percent minimum contribution that people try to make like i know the cemetery committee has tried to hold to 10 percent of their own budget is that something that's statutory or recommended or does that not apply to the school system or it, it we like to see somebody of 10 or even 20 percent um it's not statutory it's it's okay. more um a guideline that we like to see just so it's not you know just cpa funds and the, and the cemetery committee did have less funds set aside but didn't need to use them because you know the projects came in under um, and other other people we you know, but sometimes the town owned <laughs> um, buildings or or projects seem to less likely be funds from someplace else. Um, Andy, do you agree? Then this longer than me. I think that it's been a tradition uh, that we want the applicant to put in some of their own money, but that we have made exceptions, mm -hmm. uh, particularly for small amounts. Um, and I have my own opinions on this particular issue, which I'll talk about in a minute, I guess, if you're not done. Sure, I'll just go on to, to my, my second question, which was, um, I think it was Paul mentioned that, you know, that there's, there's a bit of camber or there's not, you know, the, it sounds like the ball fields are not 100% ideally graded. And is, I was wondering if, any regrading has been considered or put off to a future phase or, um, you know, drainage out there. I know there's a, the, there's a lawn drain out. Uh, what's that? The s Southeast corner of the, of the fields. Um, is that something that was evaluated by Colliers or. 
No, it was like Berkshire Design Group is our. Berkshire, yeah. Yeah. Parading out there is like really tricky. We're in a floodplain. There's a lot of state and federal regulations that they, they basically can't change the elevation at all or an increased drainage at all. And so there's, it's more complex. So that's, it's not so simple just to go in and regrade that varsity field. And so that has been the plan all along, Mark, is that now that we've done a lot of the uh, grading, we still have more to do with the softball and varsity fields, but we'll tie it into that existing system. So phase one has done a bunch. We'll just we'll just finish it off. Thank you. Yeah, I'm that sorry. actually became a lot trickier than we than we knew in that first phase. Just learning about that. Andy. Uh, well, actually, before I begin, I'd like to hear what the CPA coalition had to say. All right. Just so I'm um, not repeating. This project is certainly eligible for CPA funding overall, but the devil is always in the details on the budget. The CPA should review each line item in the budget of every project application because sometimes the individual items aren't eligible for funding. In this case, there are only a few budget items which you might want to closely examine. First, there is funding for pavement and parking lot striping. We couldn't tell if the pavement was for just the walking path, and if it is, there's no issue. But if the pavement for expanding the parking lot it is the pavement um, for expanding the parking lot. CPA funds cannot be spent on a parking lot shared with the school. The primary use of the entire property is for school purposes. So parking lot repairs, expansions and striping must be paid for out of other funds. It is rare for recreation projects on the school grounds to be paid 100% out of CPA funds as the primary use is for school purposes. In this case, there's a whole, whole package on top of it. So it is to be expected that some funding may have to come from somewhere else. Many CPAs are willing to fund the essential components of a school recreation project, but ask for a small amount of funding to come from other sources such as town funds or very often private funding by booster clubs and such. Most of, these project, project, um, most of this project are necessary items. You can't have a baseball field without a backstop, for example. The one thing that jumps out is nice to have, but not necessary is the electronic scoreboards. It's a discussion you might want to have with the CPC. It is an amenity like this truly necessary in the best use of limited CPA funds? One thing to add to that discussion, the fields and walking paths will be used for town citizens when not in use by the school, but the scoreboards are almost only used for school teams and organized competition, not the general public or even youth sports. The last item to discuss um, is access to these fields by the public. Most CPCs would want a memorandum of understanding between the CPC and the school committee regarding public access to the fields and walking path. Everyone's intentions are most definitely good around this issue, I'm sure, but circumstances change, school committees change, school staff change. It would be important to negotiate the specific terms and hours of public use, ensure that the public use will be without rental or other charges and put everything down in writing. Um, so those are, so I guess one question to ask is the parking lot, there, there is the paved walkway, um, eight foot wide, the asphalt paving and parking striping, are those in the parking lot or is that specific just to the? Um, yeah, no, I think they are. So it's about $40,000 that are adjacent to, I think what they're saying is they would, have to redo some of the that area and so they disrupt the asphalt so i'm saying they'd repair that so that's good feedback mary if that can't be included that's about forty thousand dollars the um, electronic scoreboards are a hundred thousand dollars there's four times twenty five thousand mm -hmm. um yeah i mean that it, it's that is clearly a discretionary those are clearly discretionary that they will say they're very nice to have i think it's it's something that if we're going to put this much money into these, it, it's, it makes it look more professional. It is something we do have visiting um, workshops or visiting, um, what do you call them, competitions that come so other, other folks use it outside the school. But I can see how, yes, that clearly is a discretionary, that $100,000 would be something that's not essential, they're nice to have though. Um, Andy, I'll turn it back over to you. Okay, thanks, Mary. Well, the CPA coalition was much more generous and liberal to you than I was going to be. So you can be happy about that. 
um, I was going to bring the uh, um, the asphalt paving and the scoreboards uh, that I did think were approved use, but I had a bunch of other things uh, that I also questioned. But if the CPA coalition says they're okay, I'm happy to to uh, drop my objections and and not even bring it up. Um, is there a conservation restriction on the land that makes up the fields? Uh, no, just those requirements, those state and federal regulations about uh, water drainage. But I don't oh. think there's a specific conservation restriction that I've heard of. W would, you, would the school board be willing to put a conservation restriction on those fields as town is- Town land, I don't, can you do that, Andy, under town land? Uh, I believe you can. Uh, and um, in so some instances, it's required if you're going to use CPA funds for recreation. Um, that, would, that would limit the school's ability to build stuff on that land in the future. Um, but if you want to get the money, you might, have to, you might have to put up with it. That's going to be a big discussion amongst the committee. Did we talk about this on the first phase? I don't remember talking about this. Uh, we might not have. Uh, I might not have thought of it until I did a little research on this project. Um, so that's something we definitely have to check out. Um, it's something definitely we can bring to the school committee if this is a requirement by the... Yeah, and I, I wanted to respond for a minute about the, uh, the 10%. I think that if it's a private organization, um, it's good to require that money because then they have some skin in the game and it's just not house money that the person is uh, doing their project with. But I think when it comes to a town organization like the school board, uh, it, it's all Hadley tax money. And so whether it all comes from the CPA or 90% of it comes from the CPA and 10% comes from the school budget, it's really all the same. Um, so in this particular case, I would be willing to waive the tradition of the 10% match, um, in my opinion. Um, also because I think school board money should be used for education. And although recreation and sports are important, um, the main mission of the school board is to educate the students, and that's what your budget should be used for. Um, and so I would be willing to approve this even without the 10% uh, without the 10% match. Andy, may I add something to what you just said? Um, yeah. And I, ironically, what the CPA coalition seems to say the two things that they just immediately questioned whether or not those would be appropriate expenses roughly come to about 10% of the original price proposal. So if the school department were to determine that those things were in fact items that um, felt integral to the project, um, just I very much appreciate what you said, but it's also just kind of ironic that the two things that the CPA coalition is questioning roughly 10% of the original price proposal. And let so me just say the coalition is a great resource for us and has a whole lot of experience and works with all the towns in the state, but it's Hadley and it's had, it's the CPA in the town. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we really appreciate their input, but it's, we don't say that's the way it has to be. I mean, it's, 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 um, but it is very helpful to have their input. They often have really good points as they did today. Amy, go ahead. Oh, I, Andy, I should first ask, you may not be done, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just totaling up the uh, amount of the uh, questionable line items. Um, it was 100,000 for anyway. the scoreboard and then 39,6 and 350, so about 140. Uh, well, it was 121,000 plus for the asphalt paving. 39,600 for the striping. Oh, and then there's the concession pad stand for 64,680. I wasn't sure about that one either. But the 121,000 is for the eight foot walkway. That's a path through the uh, perimeter. That's not the asphalt paving. Is that right? Yeah, that's, so that would continue that extra 1,500 feet 
But you right, bring up so Andy that you're the concrete pad. That's a good. That's a good point. Actually, um, that is something that there's some hope for down the road that we would have uh, area for bathrooms because really right now there's no when we have those um, you know, competitions. It's really people have to go inside the building, which is really disruptive. So the thought was we'd put down a pad or either eventually build out a, a restroom or um, you know place to put porta potties, but. If okay, that's something CPAs doesn't consider legitimate, then uh, re restrooms are allowed. Okay. Concession stands are probably not allowed. Gotcha. Okay. Thanks. So we'd have to decide on that as well. I mean, if we took these things out and discussed them for six months, you could come back and if they were eligible, we could put them back in. Yeah. This okay. is not your only opportunity. That's fair. I think that's it for me. Thank you, Andy. Amy? One of the things I wanted to say is that these fields, when they play games out there, some of these games, it's amazing the community support that we have, that people want to go to these games. It's, it is for the whole community. I, I hand out, because these are uh, people that come through my office all the time. They don't have children there. And I go and I print out the schedule so that they can go and see the games. They don't have any children, but it's a, a community place where people of all ages can come and watch a game and, and, and root. And then when our team does amazing and then goes all the way to states, it is such a big uproar in the community. People read the paper. I mean, it is talked about all the time. And I think it is those scoreboards are, are a big deal. When you go to watch the game and you can see what the score is, I mean, I, I, it's, it's, it's all about the whole experience. And I think that is a big deal to have those scoreboards because it, 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 in, it helps it make it more enjoyable, the experience. And I mean, the way that the, the school, um, the one thing about Hopkins is amazing is the school spirit and, and the community spirit. And the feeling of community when when you go to any of these games. Um, I mean, I, I can remember Mr. Kelly all the way to the end of his last few days. He was at the schools yeah. um, going to going to games. I mean, these 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 um, I just love the feeling when I go go to watch some of these kids and, and, and just the, the spirit. So that is one thing I would like to say. And the other thing is if our, if our um, fields get to be great, then we can host more jamborees and we can host things, which brings, I go to um, once a year, we go to a jamboree out in Westfield and we go to Smith um, Academy, which it, the parking lots are jammed full. There's people everywhere, which, hey, if we're bringing all these schools and we do jamborees in our area, which if we have the two fields and we can do the jamborees, then that helps our town too, because more money's coming in through our restaurants and visiting the area. I'm just saying it's, it's a good thing to bring more people in. So I just, I, I, I just think it's a great project. Thanks, Amy. Mm -hmm. Anyone else on the CPA want to say, ask questions or say some comments? I, I just want to say a manual school board is good enough for Fenway Park. <laughs> we, that's what we need, Andy, is a big green monster. I forgot to put that in. That's yeah, right. <laughs> Perhaps our funding is the big green monster we, we'll, trying to capture. We'll, right. we'll have a better scoreboard than Fenway Park has. <laughs> and if I may, Mary, I just wanted to circle back to some very important points that I think that Edwin raised, because I know that the CPA has to ask questions. This group has to ask itself questions about where's the best place to invest this money. And you are stewards of taxpayer dollars. And I appreciate how seriously you take that. Mm -hmm. So I just want to underscore that the school department is keenly aware of the generosity of the town and of how committed the town of Hadley is to its schools. And um, we don't take the faith that you put in us lightly or that the taxpayers put in us lightly. Um, we have had, as we care deeply about the finances of the town, um, there's a school department budget and there's a local contribution, the part of that budget that is made up 
by um, the town funding by um, those tax dollars. And our local contribution increase in um, fiscal year 22 was a zero. So we had the exact same request for local contribution and also during COVID turned back um, just over $400,000, I believe, to the town, understanding the financial position the town was in, I can get you that exact amount. So I just wanted to circle back to that. I think it is really important. And we try to regularly remind people, again, we recognize how generous the town is from a variety of boards and sources that have helped the schools. We don't take that lightly. We don't take it for granted. And we see ourselves as part of a team, one team trying to make the place better for every member of the community. Um, and again, that's also why we shared that larger 10-year um, plan with you. So you could see we are looking to invest, continue to attract school choice students in, invest those dollars for the improvement of town-owned buildings and town-owned spaces. Um, we do want to do our part and we take that seriously and we consider it collaborative effort. So I think it's a valid point. I'm sure you folks are frequently asked questions about taxpayer investments, and I just wanted to bring that up. Thank you very much, Annie. Yes, thank you. I just, from my perspective, I certainly think this is a wonderful project also. I think the town has already invested a lot of money in those fields, so it's easy to easy to want to see them um, really be fully usable. And um, I, you know, I think the the parking lot probably is problematic. It's hard that the parking lot paving is needed because the project's going to disturb it. Um, you know, in that sense, I guess I'm not so much against the parking lot paving because it wouldn't need to be done if this project wasn't happening. And the 40 grand of paving doesn't go far. Um, but I think it's, I, I think everything on here is something that'll really um, make it a, great place to play ball. And I, I do like kind of the idea of just a simple memo of understanding if the school committee would entertain that just to spell out that, you know, we this is understand that the public will also be using this space when it's not being used by the school or, 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 um, or planned programs that the school committee has. Um, I think it's, is probably a good thing to just, you know, just have, but, um, I, I think it is a good project. I really appreciate all the work that's gone into it. I would suggest a million six hundred eleven four hundred. Um, it kind of I have a pet peeve about bringing things down to the dollar or thirty three cents because it's it's all an estimate to begin with, and I think it's just easier to <laughs> easier to have round numbers. But, um, but other thoughts? Other? Um, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I could. Um, I apologize. I was not um, on the planning board or on this committee during phase one. So uh, I may be asking something that's already been discussed back then, but I thought for myself and for any other taxpayers that aren't here tonight, but might view this on Hadley Media, um, could someone from the school uh, give some context to um, time and investment. You know, uh, it, you know, we see towns build a new school every wh whatever, 20, 30 years. Um, if someone was wondering if you're spending a million dollars on the fields every year, I doubt you are. Has it been 10, 15, 20 years since the fields were in invested in? And how long do you think um, do you hope this in, in investment will last? You know, so some explanation like, like that might uh, help inform the taxpayers that this isn't, you know, this is the one, not one time, but, you know, this is perhaps in the 10 year cycle or whatever, this is a one time big push. Let's get this done. I don't know if I explained that. Correctly. Yeah, no, I, I, right. What's the return on investment and when do we proceed having to, to maybe make that investment, right? You, we just, if we remodel our kitchen, how long is it going to last night? That's a great question. Right. Um, well, we do have that 10 year plan that Annie shared with, with you. And so we would not envision revising this for 
within that 10 years, probably longer. I've been on the school committee now, I think eight years. Um, and when I came on, I inherited a draft plan to revise the fields that had been in the works for multiple years based on uh, the land that used to be crops that the, the Rex had, had been farming um, that the trustees had facilitated the purchase of. So the town owned it uh, and it, it had just been in use as agriculture. Um, and so it wasn't until uh, the first CPA tranche of funds back in, I think, 2017, that we actually got the momentum going to actually start doing the work. And so I would envision this lasting multiple decades um, because really we're doing the hard work. You're not going to have to go out and regrade. We're, we're doing that. You're not going to have to go out and put in new irrigation. That irrigation is going to last for a long time. We've got uh, pumps out there with um, you know, sprinklers, so it's going to stay wet. It's really just going to be maintenance, right? And all the stuff we're putting in are hard metal structures. They're not going to degrade anytime soon. So it's really maintaining the fields that's going to take the effort. That it, so I imagine this will last multiple decades. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. How do people on the committee feel about a conservation restriction? You feel it's necessary for this project? Or sure, I do. can we go without it? You know, it's town, it's town property and it's town funds. And if the town at some point feels there's a better use for that. I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, I agree. I think it's town property, town funds. I think that putting restrictions on just makes it uh, tough. We saw what happened when there was restrictions on up at um, uh, North Hadley Hall the, there when in that how many times I went through town hall or town meeting because of the restrictions on the fields. Um, and they weren't able to do anything with it. It, it kind of ties your hands. It's 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 town. It's it's all town taxpayer money going to town property. So I don't think we need restrictions. I do like the idea I heard earlier about setting some kind of agreement in place, whether it has to be amended as as situations change in the future, but some kind of agreement on, you know, hours of public access and when, you know, uh, you know, with regard to the walkway or whatever, you know, um, there was some discussion about that earlier. I don't know if that was referring to, you know, would I get my car towed or, or ticketed if I used the walkway when the school needs the parking or, you know, I, I don't know how much thought has been put into that. That would be something that would be beneficial to the non-school taxpayers. Um, but also we wouldn't want to set you in concrete that you couldn't you know, um, come back about it. Okay. We'd be happy to talk about that, Mark. Currently there are signs that said, you know, fields are open for public access outside of school hours. So basically, you know, eight to three or what have you, and eight to two thirty. I'll let Andy chime in. I don't think it's been an issue, but if we wanted to clarify that further, I mean, on weekends when or evenings when my folks, my kids were playing games, uh, I saw lots of people, the public, just walking around the fields, and that's, that's great. It was it added to the atmosphere. It was wonderful. Uh, Am I right that a lot of people join the fields from Middle Street, not? From that's correct yeah the there is a public access route there that's right yeah so during the school day the tricky part with the parking is that all those spaces and there aren't a lot it's a small parking lot are assigned to faculty and students um so sometimes we have enough of a conflict when a staff parks in a student spot or vice versa <laughs> so during the parking lot is during school days but in terms of of even accessing the fields, we do have those signs. I can tell you that during the school day, if we're not having um, physical education classes out on the field, I've seen people walking on the track. Nobody has ever chased anybody off the track and said, do you know what time it is? But um, <laughs> community, uh, we, haven't, we haven't had those issues. Parking, usually I think people either walk and then access it from Middle Street or perhaps park along Middle Street because they don't pull into our parking lot during the school day. On the weekends and other times, 
people to use that parking lot and we don't, you know, we don't have an issue with that. So I think your signs already address that mm -hmm. point. So I think I'm satisfied. Thank you. That this will be our largest single expenditure, right? The, the previous largest ex single expenditure was the fields phase one. So <laughs> it's up the game a little. You're finishing the job. We appreciate it. Thank you. If you choose yeah, to as Paul said, when I became superintendent of Pathy Public Schools in July of 2014, there was a, I mean, this has been aspirational for many decades. And there was a design that was put together originally, I think in maybe 2009, then again in 2012, Paul talked about inheriting it. I had also inherited what felt like a tremendous aspiration of the community. I do wanna underscore that. We're very appreciative as a school department, the students, the student athletes, their families and people from other communities come to the game. But it's very clear to me that this was in many ways a community aspiration. It is a little field of dreams. It's a, it's a beautiful place. Hadley is a beautiful town. Those fields are exquisite. The view is exquisite. It does bring people together. I think Amy summed that up quite well. It's been a big, big dream for a long time. And this committee has done it. Uh, frankly, this committee has made that dream possible and other, you know, we've had the board of trustees and some private funders and some individual donations that you folks have done the lion's share of the work. School department's appreciative, but I would say that the town is appreciative as well. Um, so deeply grateful. If, if the committee does vote yes and you get to go to town meeting, I would try to get one or two student athletes to talk about the plan. They always get a good reception at town meeting. And That's a great point, Andy. Smoother. You're right, Andy. They are wicked more likable than I am. So thank you for reminding me of that. Good idea, Andy. That's right. Yeah. The other thing is it would be nice to have the uh, parking lots. I know that if we're saying just, just throwing it out there, we can say that the parking lots are needed um, for the public use um, because of uh, the games, um, because of afterwards um, that people use it, that park there, that, like they said, on the weekends, that use the track. Heck, we all use it during uh, town meeting even. Um, all town meeting, we all park there. Um, and so many times we use the parking lot for different things. So if we can include that, that is a wonderful thing. We definitely can. Towns all over Massachusetts use CPA funds for projects that are not allowed uh, and nothing happens to them. Um, so we can vote to fund the parking lot, although it is clear that you're not supposed to use CPA funds it's not the whole parking lot though right it's just the edge where the it would be disturbed that's correct yeah well it, you know it's up to us you know that's all i'm saying okay thank you mm -hmm. any other questions or comments i see david mm -hmm. eisenthal has joined us as well welcome mm -hmm. um any other questions for dr mckenzie or paul for no i would just add on okay. to what Andy just said that you could argue that the asphalt is just repairing what the project disturbs. So, you know, if we look to justify its inclusion. Agreed. Well, thank you. I hope one or both of you can join us again in two weeks and, and um, really okay. appreciate your time tonight. And, and um, it's, it's really wonderful to see. Yeah, thank you very much. We will be thank here. You. If you, we will be thank here. You. Thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure to work in and for. So thank you so much for your time. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome right. to stay for the bonding discussion if you want, but I guess not. <laughs> so this, I'm going to welcome to David Eisenthal. We really appreciate you being here. Um, so not a problem. Sideways. <laughs> David, you're vertical instead of uh, horizontal. <laughs> Let me get zero this, gravity. Is this better? Yeah. Yes. Better. Okay, um, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, now, Mary, did you want to uh, put my presentation up on the screen? I do. Thank you. Let me just grab it here. 
Um, well, thank you for accommodating me. I'm actually coming off of a meet, another meeting. Um, hey, thank you for accommodating us. Not a problem. Okay. okay. So um, I prepared a presentation for the uh, Community Preservation Committee on financing of uh, that can be done through the Community Preservation Act. Um, my name is David Eisenthal. I'm a vice president, senior fiscal advisor with Unibank Fiscal Advisory Services. We are the municipal financial advisors to the town of Hadley, Massachusetts. And in that capacity, I'm speaking with you about kind of what the town's options, what the committee's options are with respect to um, financing through the Community Preservation Act. Um, so, Mary, if you go to the next slide, uh, there are basically two provisions that govern the authorization of debt financing under the Community Preservation Act. Uh, Chapter 44B, which is actually the Community Preservation Act, Section 11 of that act uh, authorizes the issuance of, of bonds and notes supported by the property tax surcharge. Excuse me, sec. Uh, sorry, I got interrupted there. Um, so um, the uh, chapter 44B section 11 supports the issuance of bonds and notes supported by the property tax surcharge. Uh, otherwise the provisions of chapter 44, which is the general municipal bond borrowing statute otherwise applies. Um, and bonds issued under this statute can be structured on a level annual debt service basis, which is like a mortgage or faster. Um, the limitation being that um, sort of like the way that the um, uh, allocation of community preservation funds where 70% can be for any purpose, but 10% must be uh, reserved for uh, conservation, 10% for historical preservation and 10% for housing, no more than 80% of the um, uh, property tax surcharge can be used for debt service on any one project. Um, the town needs, in fact, needs to provide documentation to bond council on debt service coverage uh, by, on, by the surcharge. Now, if you go to the next slide, um, if the town wanted to finance a great, a larger project than um, the, um, than what would be, would be supported by the property tax surcharge, uh, the town could uh, authorize a project which would be funded by uh, community preservation revenues such as the uh, state match, uh, fund balance, and other town revenues. Um, town revenues in this case are the ultimate backstop. Uh, and so that, you know, in all cases, this is a, these obligations are general obligations of the town. The town is the ultimate backstop, but if the uh, debt service is structured so that it uh, uh, will be covered by the property tax surcharge, it's considered to be a true Community Preservation Act um, financing. You can go to the next slide. So to put some numbers on this, if the, um, uh, if the, assuming the FY22 surcharge, which is a little bit more than $300,000, uh, the maximum annual debt service for any one project would be uh, a little more than uh, $243,000. That's 80% of the surcharge. A hypothetical single project with a 15-year repayment level annual debt service, again, like a mortgage, uh, and a 3.5% assumed interest rate, uh, that would produce a maximum financing of about $2.8 million dollars. Go to the next slide. Um, you know, if you if you borrow under Chapter Forty Four, other funds could be allocated to debt service, the state match, the uh, community preservation available funds, uh, as well as other town revenues and available funds. Again, general revenues of the town are remain the ultimate backstop for something that's uh, financing beyond the Community Preservation Act uh, um, pro property tax surcharge. So um, Mary asked what a hypothetical $1 million financing would look like, um, annual debt service. So a 10-year 
10 years uh, of a million dollars of financing at three and a quarter percent is a little less than $120,000. 15 years is about $85,000. 20 years is about a little more than $70,000, about $72,000. If you go to the next slide, uh, the, I will talk a little bit about the process of authorizing debt. Uh, the Community Preservation Committee would vote to request town meeting approval of borrowing articles. Uh, and what I would recommend is that you uh, seek review by the town's bond council. That's a specialized law firm that works with the town to review borrowing articles and to otherwise uh, review the legal proceedings uh, and the legal aspects of any borrowing. And uh, you would request this review through uh, Treasurer uh, Linda Sanderson. Um, after that, the town meeting would vote on these articles. Uh, two thirds vote would be required for passage. If you go to the next slide. Um, borrowings would then proceed like other town borrowings, mostly. Um, you know, that we would be looking at timing uh, and structure based on project cash flow and kind of on the debt service impacts as we projected them initially. Uh, I think that they, what I would suggest is that there would be a need for continued communication between your committee and the town treasurer, uh, satisfaction of legal requirements. Now, these would be a series of documents that bond council would need to review in order to assure that the proceedings follow local and state laws and also assure exemption of interest from uh, federal and state income taxation. Um, we'd also wanna be uh, in communication, you and the, the treasurer would wanna be in communication about timing of borrowings to make sure that you have uh, proper coverage of cash flow. The, just to iterate here that the bar, any borrowings that are done are legally carried out by the treasurer with the approval of the select board. Um, once the town meeting makes its approval, the, le the legal responsibility rests with the treasurer and the select board. Um, so Mary asked, what is a prominent, uh, what is a prudent financing amount? Um, I think a good starting point is to limit uh, the amount of financing to what would be supported by the property tax surcharge. Unless you have a plan, a well thought out plan for the use of other revenues and available funds. Uh, so that leaves things pretty open ended, but maybe as a starting point, you kind of look to uh, where this is not something that the town of Hadley has done in the past. Um, you would, um, what you would do is uh, start with amounts that could be financed through the property tax surcharge. Um, you know, we would be wanting to look at uh, effects on the credit. Hadley is actually has the strongest possible rating from uh, S&P Global Ratings, a triple A. The things we'd want to watch are debt levels and not just, and this would be something more generally that we would talk to uh, other town officials about, but just look at general community preservation and water debt levels. And then, you, you know, balance that with the use of the community preservation fund balance um, and it could be the fact that if you're using, if the town is using less of the community preservation fund fund balance, that that could be a positive uh, factor. You know, what you'd have to balance out is what the effect would be on debt levels. Um, so, and that's something we'd have to look at the specific numbers. So uh, I'll go to the last, so, so we go to the approach to permanent financing. I think, uh, I understand you're looking at initially a million dollar financing. Uh, ideally, you'd want to combine uh, different projects within the Community Preservation Act or combine even with other town capital projects. Uh, I'll make the comment that $1 million is a small amount for a standalone bond issue. So to the extent you can work with uh, the treasurer, the town administrator, and the select board to uh, coordinate permanent financing of whatever projects you choose to push forward through town meeting, uh, that would be a very positive thing. So at this point, I'll take any questions you might have. I don't even know what to ask. Um, <laughs> you want to think about it, Edwin? 
Yeah. Uh, so, um, are you saying that we we can only legally uh, recommend eighty percent of a project funding? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying that the limitation is, you know, as you know, the community preservation fund is allocated seventy percent, kind of for any type of project, okay. and then you have the ten percent that's reserved for each of his historical right, right. That's conservation and uh, housing. So that means effectively the most you could do for any one project would be 80% of any given amount of either uh, community preservation revenues or um, 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 fund balance. So that's, that's, where, that's why I'm saying 80%. That's effectively for a single project. Right. would be the be a, an, an effective limit. So Edwin, if we collect 300,000 and it's not the state portion, it's only the town portion that we can look at. If we collect 300,000, um, 20% of that or 60,000 couldn't be used towards the debt. So 240,000 is the most. But right, although it could be used for other, to... just to be clear, it could be used for another purpose. Uh, you know, that the, the 240,000 only is relative to um, a single project. You could uh, do a series of projects where you uh, speak David, for all of the, I'm sorry? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah we David, can, we've sorry. Lost your audio. Yeah. I'm sorry, can you hear me now? Oh, yes. 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 Okay. Um, so what I what I'm saying is that you could use all of the three hundred thousand for different, you know, split among different projects. But the effective limitation here is uh, a that for a single project, you really can't do more than uh, eighty percent of the property tax surcharge. Although you know you're not really limited. I mean, if you wanted to fund a larger project, you are able to ask town meeting to authorize debt that would be paid for by the surcharge and the state match and available funds and maybe other town funds. It's just that this, in that case, the borrowing would not strictly be under chapter 44B. It would be under chapter 44, which is the general municipal borrowing statute. Could you briefly tell us what the difference is between 44 and 44B? Well, uh, I mean, I think that it's really, 44 is the statute, that's the general statute under which the town borrows. I mean, if you wanted to do some sort of uh, athletic field project or some sort of uh, conservation project, that could be done under chapter 44. It's just that uh, chapter 44B, which is the, that is the Community Preservation Act, has the special provision under which you can dedicate a portion of the property tax surcharge to debt service. Oh. Uh, that's, and that's the, uh, that's the special sauce of the Community Preservation Act is that you are able to have, uh, to dedicate that revenue, you know, 80, you know, up to 80% of the total surcharge for debt service for, uh, for a given project. Although you could, you could speak for more of it if you're talking about multiple projects of different types. Right, right. right. So, so, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, let me see if I got this right. So, assuming we have a three hundred thousand dollar town contribution, we get what did you say? Two point four million if we pay eighty percent of the three hundred thousand for ten years. Right. Well, I, I chose. I made some assumptions. I said if you do fifteen years, yeah, at three and a half percent level payments, you know, like a mortgage. That a lot that produces about a two point eight million dollar single project. Now I'm not say, I'm not recommending that as an amount. I'm just saying to give you an idea of what the scope is for that two hundred and forty thousand uh, dollars repaid over fifteen years. Um, you know the, the two hundred and forty thousand dollars a year. You're you're borrowing two point eight million dollars. Just to give you a, a sense of what that looks like. So that's, that's about very uh, helpful. Yeah, it's, uh, so that's a little bit less than if we saved three hundred thousand dollars 
for 15 years, right? But then we'd have to wait 15 years to do the project. That's why you borrow the money so you can do the project right. now. Right. Well, you're paying interest on the, uh, um, if you borrow now, you're paying interest on the amount that you borrow. Um, so that's why, you know, you would end up with, I mean, obviously over 15 years, uh, $300,000 would produce four and a half million dollars. Uh, so, you know, that's the difference is really the interest that the town would be paying. You'd be paying interest from the 300,000 or the 240,000, actually, if you're talking about a single project. Okay. You know, one thing that we have potentially in the works is the, the Russell School Committee, which Alan was, Weinberg was leaving to go to, said, you know, throughout figures of wanting to approach CPA for between one and $2 million. And if you add that on to the school, you're right about that 2.8 million. And we certainly, you know, I wouldn't want to tie up all the town's funds every year for the next 15 years and not be able to do other things. I know we get a state match, but the, the reason you can't use the state match against the bond payment is that's not guaranteed. I mean, sometimes it's right. 60% for us, sometimes it's a hundred percent, but it's not guaranteed into the future. Mm -hmm. um, right. So it, and I'm not, to know that, I'm you know, sorry. It's helpful to know that as much money as it seems like we have to work with, you know, if you start doing a couple million dollar projects, it really uses it up. Um, right. And I'm not, you know, I think uh, at various times, I think at least one other time in the past, I've spoken with this committee just to give a sense of what, you know, to just to may really inform members of the committee that there is this option. Other communities do use the um, community preservation funds in just this manner. They will borrow against the property surcharge and maybe even beyond the property surcharge, you know, taking, you know, agreeing that you'll pay, take the uh, state match and maybe some available funds towards the debt service. Right. Um, that's, those are really policy issues and you really need to sort of plan out, you know, what are your priorities and how do you want to plan out the use of these funds? Uh, it's a tool that's available to you, but, um, you know, up to now that the town of Hadley hasn't used uh, these monies uh, at, to support financing. They've used, it's purely been to build up uh, available funds for, for kind of uh, pay as you go, um, pay as you go projects and that's a you know it's work that seems to have worked for the town uh this is just a way of kind of another way of looking at another way of operating and certainly if uh the town wanted to if this committee and the and town meeting and um you know other folks in the town agreed that this was a good way good thing to do we could certainly work with you to uh structure and um Make a make a financing like this happen. It's you know they they just said these fields should last for decades, and in some ways, having it paid over several decades um, makes sense because people are going to be enjoying them ten years from now, as opposed to mm -hmm. precluding other projects being done in the next few years because all the money has gone to this. So there's right. I'm gonna share the, I know there are more questions. I'm going to share the screen too and. Let's hear from the rest of the committee, and then I'd love to get Linda's perspective too on what she thinks. But I'm going to go back to sharing um, the money that we have right now available as well. Um, Mark, did you want to say some more? Um, it could be a stupid question, but I was reading in some of the literature you shared that if a municipality opts out of the um, community Preservation uh, Act program, uh, after they have committed to a, a bonding issue, then the town either has to stay in until that bonding issue is paid off, or at least stay in enough to pay off its debt. Is that, I don't know if I heard that correctly, and if so, I was wondering if David knows if, you know, do communities often, uh, have they opted out of the program? You know, I'm not aware of any communities that have opted out of the Community Preservation uh, Act. I think the, the thing is that these borrowings are considered to be general obligations of the municipality. So even, you know, 
and I'm not certain whether the town would be required to maintain the surcharge to, until the debt is paid off. But even if it did not, the town still would have a general would have an obligation to pay from other from taxes and other revenues uh, the debt service on these bonds. So it's you know even opting out. These are not revenue bonds. They're not secured by the revenues, so to speak. Uh, they are ultimately general obligations, and the town would be obligated to pay the, the debt service regardless. It's just that the, the, um, the Community Preservation Act provides a tool whereby you can use this stream of payments, not have it compete with uh, other property taxes or other revenues to make these payments. So... But regardless of whether the um, uh, surcharge is enough to pay the debt service, uh, either because the project is too large or if the, uh, um, if the uh, town chooses to uh, opt out, you know, it doesn't matter. These are, these are general obligations uh, of the town and the town would uh, need to make the payment on these, on these bonds. Thank you. Can I, Mary, can I jump in on that? Yes, please. Um, I, I think this is an important uh, area for us to really understand because I know it, I'm pretty sure it's going to come up. There are people who do speak from time to time about why are we having to pay this extra money for CPA? And it certainly does come up every few years about uh, we should be able to get out. We said, and, and we always manage to stay in, which is, I, I think, is to the town's benefit. But I can see it coming up saying why we don't want to obligate the town for the next 10 or 15 years to stay in the CPA funds. The thing is, uh, David, even once we get to a certain point with the bond, um, we don't have to. I know we have to pay off the bond, but we don't have to pay it off over 15 years there. We can use the balance of CPA funds and buy our way out of it at that point. Not just I mean, you said it's a general obligation of the town and we'd have to pay for it in other ways. That sounds that sounds scary too. If people don't want to move it over to somewhere else, but it can be paid out of the CPA principal here, can't it? And we get out of the bond. You would call well, bond, guess, really. So, Pardon? Linda, are you asking uh, if the uh, at, so, at some point the town, let's say the town issues fifteen-year bonds and the bonds are callable at year eight, could the yeah. town redeem those bonds at year eight using community preservation? Uh, fund balance. I think that that's possibly the case, um, but that's that's actually you know I think that I don't want to definitively answer that. That's a but I believe okay. that you know I think that that's very possible. But I do want to. I think that's a question we'd want to okay. kind of consider carefully and maybe bring in uh, Rick Manley on that. Okay. But I, th I think I think we're going to need an answer for that. Something. Yeah. Yeah, that but sounds one, to me to be like a. That sounds to me to be a plausible uh, idea um, to use uh, community preservation funds right. that have built up to pay off bonds if if the town chooses to do that time in the future. But I can ask that question. Right, so that we're not forced to stay in the program for fifteen years if yeah, if, if yeah. that is somebody's issue. The boot camp that the coalition had on bonding, their point was you do need to stay in until it's paid off. Um, but you could reduce, say the yearly payment is 100,000, you could reduce your percentage down to that amount, the surcharge down to, so that you're collecting just enough to pay off the bond for that period of time. Is another right. way that they did. They also said no state, no town in the state is actually getting yeah. the CPA. Right. And I'm not sure they're contemplating towns that are sitting on $3 million in principle either. And when we're only borrowing 1.7, it seems like we should be able to pay it off with, um, with the principal so somewhere think? short of it, just like way you pay off your mortgage early or your other uh, loans early. So that's something I would like to know so that we could answer that definitively Good. to those who are concerned. Linda, can I ask you, and I know people have some other questions too, but can I ask you, looking at our figures here of what we have currently, and again, it's about 40,000 higher, probably closer to 80,000 once they get August um, situated um, so far, but 
we, you know, we've got the, we try to keep 500,000 without dipping into, obviously it is, you know, available funds, but we're at 1.5 million um, in general available plus another 90,000 in open space. So we almost have enough, but it would leave us very lean. Um, right. To, um, to do this without a bond. Right. But mm -hmm. we also have the Russell School coming, perhaps, again, and that may or may not even pass town meeting. You know, none of, all of these are dependent on town meeting. Um, what, you know, looking at, we, we obviously want to be able to do an APR or another worthy project that comes before us next year or that, you know, year after. And um, what, what looks to you like a, Figure well, I, well, I really would not want to see you spend down your. Uh, I think was it the way they saying one point almost one point seven million dollars is what the right. school fields were going to be, mm -hmm. and I wasn't actually aware that of uh, that you had uh, the uh, another project hanging out there that was also could also be very large, but um, I would say that the borrowing to pay off the one point seven million dollars for the schools is way significantly more favorable than spending down your principal. This is generating income for you too. Right. Um, you've got the, I mean, that is a third source of income. You know, from looking at it, Mary, not every month, uh, there are months where it goes down, but we have this, these, this yes, <laughs> thank you. Uh, um, and it's been that way with all of our larger funds as is everybody's uh, funds, but we have over the years had a significant income um, from the money that CPA is, is holding so over time we come out ahead um this has not been one of our greatest greatest uh spells this last six months or so um so i would like to see it stay invested and go ahead and do the borrowing the borrowing um it doesn't happen um, um so this is a question for you david is this the same way that we did? I know when we had the other multi-million dollar projects in the buildings, we were doing um, we were doing the short-term borrowing because not all the money is spent at once, although this is probably going to go quicker than the buildings, I don't know. Um, we do the short-term borrowing and then we pile it up and then over in a few years, we do the bond. Um, or is this something that we should be doing the bond right away so that we could get going on that 15 years? I'm actually you know, thinking. <laughs> I don't think, you know, I think you should look at this as from Linda, from your perspective, this is just another purpose for which you're going to borrow money on behalf of the town. And I think to the extent that, you know, 1.7 is not a very large issue on a standalone basis. So I don't know, you know, Linda, you and I probably ought to talk about yeah. what the town might have coming just yeah. so that. Uh, we can kind of, I mean, what would be great is uh, if you could do um, a municipal purpose issue that might include 1.7 million and then some other money for other town purposes. So that would, so, be, for permanent financing, handle it in that manner. So we can uh, combine them. They don't have to be separate CPA bond. It can be part of a $3 million bond for the town. Correct. That's correct. Some paid out of CPA and some. Okay. Um, something else that you said uh, sort of uh, put up a flag for me. You said uh, that, um, and I remember this from the others, that we needed to keep during the term of our borrowing for um, uh, with ex to keep the exemption, um, the whole use of the property has to stay exempt. What impact does it have that they might rent out the fields to other um programs or if they were to have uh selling concessions on the property well this is these are things this is part of and linda you you're uh experienced at this so we're really talking about this for the benefit of the committee uh but you know it's it's going to be uh, bond council will re review all of those concerns. Those are the types of exactly the types of things and precisely why the committee and you, Linda, need to stay in good communication so that uh, issues like that get properly vetted by um, uh, Rick Manley and the, his tax partner, Todd Cooper. Uh, that's precisely you. Now, would it be the worst thing? I'll tell you that, you know, if it turned out that it was a good business decision to 
um, run this such that it would become a private activity or taxable issue. That wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, but I think that we want to know kind of where we stand uh, from the get-go so that, you know, when we do project what the costs are, we know uh, whether to use a taxable rate or a tax-exempt rate. You know, I think for our purposes, you guys are getting a little technical, like maybe we can use our meeting time to talk a little more about the questions that we have and um, leave leave that to you experts to figure out. Like, the, you know. the only thing, if I might, the only reason I think that this matters for the committee is I, I think it just, I, I want to underline that it's important that you maintain communication with Linda. Absolutely. That's, yeah. that's really where I'm going with this is that, you know, the, the details of this really don't matter as much at this stage, but I think just the, the concept that you're going to communicate with Linda, who will co communicate with me. And if you need to communicate, if you, the committee needs to communicate with me, I'm happy to talk to you, but really that communication should be between the committee and with, and Linda. And Linda, we so appreciate your help with all of this. And so, sure. uh, so do we say this goes to town meeting? Is this two separate articles, one to vote for the project and another one to vote on the bonding? Or is it wrapped up in one article? One article. Okay. But it's two thirds majority to pass. Correct. As it's borrowing. I just That's wanted to point out how much money we've spent the last couple of years. These are each annual town meeting or special town meeting, 200,000, 215, 212, 265, 120, 512 um, APRs, and again, the Hopkins playing field, um, 625, the Hopkins playing field was a big part of that. Um, I don't feel like we need to leave all 1.7 million available um in the current cpa fund in terms of you know if it, if it helps reduce how much we have to pay in the future especially if we have another project coming on but that's you know again that's something um, i don't know unless all the farmers come in to fund their barns <laughs> right. Right. right what other questions do people you, have Eric. Um, at, oh i'm sorry somebody else had a question um, so as I understand it, in layman's terms, the advantage of bonding is that you don't, one, you don't have to save for the project. You get the money right away and you get the start right away. And you don't spend down the balance that you have already saved. You get to use that money for other projects and you just use future incomes to pay for the borrow. And so it increases flexibility. I would say that that's a good way to put it. Uh, that you are, although what you're doing is you are you are obviously not using future revenues to continue to build up fund balance. You're using it to pay off the debt that the town has incurred for the project. So that's the trade-off. Right. Although in the CPA case, we would still have the. Uh, thirty percent, no, the twenty percent because you can only use eighty percent, right, of the That's town's great. money, and we would still have the state match whatever it is for right. to fund future projects. That's right. correct. And do do you think we're going to have our next meeting in two weeks to vote on the school proposal? Is two weeks enough time to decide to do it through bonding instead of direct payments? Is it enough time to do that if that's what the committee chooses? We don't have, I mean, we just have to say that's what we want to do and Linda figures it out, right, Linda? Right, you just, you do it, you just say uh, to borrow and, and we'll get the wording right from okay. bond council. But okay. um, it's just borrowing money, just the way we borrowed it for the buildings and um, police cars and fire engines. Okay, so there is enough time. If the committee decides to do it, we can we can do it before mm -hmm. special town meeting. And okay, if, one, if one last one... thing I just wanted to say, David, the last time you were before the committee years ago, I wouldn't say you got a hostile uh, <laughs> a reception, but at least a, uh, a about highly concerned. 
So I hope that we were treating you a little more respectfully <laughs> this time. Right. Well, I think that what the issue was last time is I think folks were thinking I was pushing this and uh, the far, nothing could be further from the truth. I'm just simply giving you information. It's really your choice as a committee whether you want to advocate for borrowing as opposed to using uh, funds on hand. Uh, and I think um, Linda really wanted me to just provide the information again and just uh, uh, make you aware of this tool that you have at your disposal, assuming that the uh, that town meeting agrees with you. And, and David, they can do something in the middle, right? If it's $1.7 million, they could decide to spend $700,000 out of their funds and borrow a million. Sure. Yeah. That that me that I'm I like better because I think I mean what I don't want to do is especially if Russell School comes is have everything in the future have to mm -hmm. be spent on just these bonds, and even though we have money now, it you know I don't think that that's the best use for the future in terms. And we do have the state match, but again, that's not that's that's a little harder to control. Mm -hmm. um, so it's you know somewhere in the middle, and then if the bond could be mixed with other things the town's doing to help spread out the cost and the CPA of course just pays that CPA portion you know that makes sense too but um, yeah I'm pretty I think that's something you do have to have figured out though before we go to town meeting is if you're going to say uh, one million to be borrowed and the balance to be uh, used out of the fund or something similar to that You'd want that allocation between your principal and your uh, borrowing amounts settled ahead of time. And do you guys have an ideal for what that, I know Linda, you suggested the whole amount. Um, yeah. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do the whole amount. I don't know what, I don't know what is the right of right figure. We have to think about that one a little bit. David, is this just a straight amortization? Like if I go on bankrate.com and put in the amortization for 3.25 in the amount, is that pretty much how much it if is? If you do level payments, it should be pretty similar. Okay. Just to... I mean, one variation, you could pay off the principal faster. I mean, typically municipalities will pay principal on a level principal basis, which produces a declining debt service. But I think for your purposes, if you want to try uh, noodling around with, with uh, you know, a financial software, you know, basically that's going to produce a level payment like a mortgage, um, which is what I was looking at here. Right. Okay. I think the, the variable that we, we still don't know about is what it will do to the town's uh, credit rating. That if borrowing this money drops our credit rating, maybe it's going to cost the town more in the long run. Right. So that's. I, I don't know. I mean, I mentioned credit as a consideration, but I'm not concerned necessarily that a million dollar additional borrowing is going to uh, negatively affect the town's credit. I just think it's something we need to keep an eye on. And it's it's through CPA funds only. So it's not going to affect the town budget or the town. Well, it could affect, you know, they will look at the credit rating. And in fact, um, and I don't know that I want to get into the technicalities of how S&P <laughs> does their ratings, but uh, believe it or not, the Community Preservation Act fund balance, that use of fund balance does kind of enter into their uh, financial scoring. Uh, of how the town does so uh, and I'm and I my point earlier was that you know it's not uh, if you borrow if you actually borrow and not use fund balance it could actually you know kind of wash in terms of the impact on the credit rating right. possibly we'd have to look at the the amounts but I'm not I'm not thinking that at 1.7 million that there would be cause for concern particularly if you're talking about doing a mixture, doing a million dollars of borrowing, say, and $700,000 in available funds. If I know, knew for sure about the Russell School, then again, we don't know if it would pass. Um, then that, you know, it's helpful to know that ahead of time, but um, we don't. Mark, what are your, I, I know you have some thoughts. Oh, 
I had a question, but I don't know. I, I know if it's late and everyone wants to go home uh, or to bed. <laughs> um, and I don't know if David can answer this in kind of an elevator speech condensed, because I know it's a, it's, it's a kind of has a very complex answer, probably. But uh, David, you, you said a few times that million dollars is not, I don't know what the, the word you use, but may not be that desirable. So I was wondering if for anyone who's not familiar with funding that sort, if you could give kind of an analogy or something of what happens when we say we're going out to bond. Um, I mean, is it like an IPO where you put out there and if you're only asking to raise a million dollars, the big fish may not bite. And so you don't get all that money that you've tried to bond, like, you know, there will be bonds which don't sell or yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's much more complex. I just didn't know if you could. It's actually it. not that it's not as complex as that. Uh, the issue, well, the issue is that, you know, the town does have other capital needs that it could combine with this. And the value of doing that is that there are economies of scale, uh, a $2 million bond issue as opposed to a $1 million bond issue, assuming that you had a $2 million bond consisting of your $1 million and a $1 million of something else, that $2 million has uh, pound for pound a lower cost of issuance than the $1 million dollar um, uh, bond issue. And that's really what I'm saying. And also, you know, when, and if you do much less than a million dollars, that, that uh, diseconomy of scale becomes more pronounced. That's really what I'm talking about. I, I think, and I, I think there is to some degree, if there's a million dollar issue, you know, the underwriters may not pay as close attention than they, as they might to a larger issue. But really my concern is just the uh, relative cost of, of uh, issuance and that if you can combine purposes, that's to, the, that's to everybody's benefit. Mm -hmm. Well, we know the school alone has, the school alone has uh, bigger plans. This is just step one in their overall plans for the school. Did they give you the entire? Yeah. They did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that money is going to have to be borrowed. Okay, so this would be added on to that then. And good. Right, good. although they're doing it over over time. And also, uh, a uh, there is a study now for whether we, um, for uh, possible um, DPW building. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm working, work down there. Um, okay. So that study is underway now. And, um, and what else? Uh, generally, our infrastructure. Or, uh, whether we're going to do something with water or sewer. So I don't think what we would have any problem by the time this went to bond, especially if we can do short-term borrowing for a few years as we're building up. But I don't, you know, again, we need to know what the timeline is, um, that there, there will be something else that would make this a worthwhile, um, worthwhile amount to go out to bond for. Good, thank you. Amy Biden, do you wanna add anything to this? I have to say that um, we have an expert at borrowing, and that is Linda. She's been doing a lot of it. <laughs> so we, I mean, all my meetings, we talk about capital, all our capital. We don't want to have to go through debt exclusion. We've been doing a lot of borrowing. She's kept it so that we um, keep, um, so, so we can borrow within the levy. She's done a fabulous job. We've actually increased our budget um in paying down um from the um general fund where you know we're paying down our, our debt quicker so that we can borrow more um for our capital items so we've been doing a lot of this um through the general um fund right so mm -hmm. even when even when we have even when we have um something for water something for sewer what happens is we borrow that money and that money gets paid out of water or that money gets paid out of sewer reserves. Are we, we borrow it that way, correct, Linda? So, I mean, they, it just stays in the same bucket to where we're borrowing the money from. So this is just, she does this all the time. It's just another um, uh, another area. I, I like the fact of doing anything a million or over. So I like the million, 
we, we can spend, you know, a million for borrowing and, and, and we can handle the 700,000. So that would be my recommendation, but I, I, I'm very comfortable with borrowing. Linda does it all the time. Wonderful. And we haven't used, we've taken in more for the last few years than we've paid out in CPA for right. state in town. So it's not like we're really strapping ourselves if we spend 700,000 of what's there. And because um, we'll replenish it pretty quickly. Um, and that gives us still some, I just want to make sure if there's small projects that come along, we're able to do them because we're, we haven't spent it all on a few big ones. Um, so Great. good. Anything else? I know it's getting late. Um, I, I think that if I won't be able to be at the next meeting, so I won't be able to participate in the discussion or vote if you decide you want to do this. Um, but I think it's a big change to spring on town meeting all of a sudden. Hey, the CPA committee decided to borrow a million dollars. Um, and that maybe we should do a little outreach to the town, like maybe a public meeting or a presentation to the select board or something, just so we're not springing this on people. It's some kind of surprise. Okay. And it's just a suggestion. I don't necessarily think that we would be, people wouldn't, we do it all the time in every every um, town meeting, we do this and we borrow money and every capital item, you see this. So this is something town meeting is very used to. Now, maybe CPA, but that's more of us because we're, we're separated. The taxpayers are a lot of the regular people don't really understand exactly they they're used to borrowing i mean i'm just saying we it, it's it's the project itself you have to decide if they decide on the project itself then as then you're recommending how to how to pay for it but um i don't think it's the biggest deal for someone to borrow i mean they do it all the time for all our capital items so i don't see that this would be a whole lot different what, what they want to know is, is, is this going to increase my taxes? And the answer is no. It's not going to even increase your CPA contribution. This is, it's coming out of a known stream of income that we already have in place. And a million, million dollars at 10 year is 118,000 a year out of the 600,000. And you could do 10 years. Um, you, you could do that. You could do it for 10 years instead of the 15 and be done with it sooner. Uh -oh. Or we could do 85 a year, but it, it um, especially knowing Russell might come, it might be good to do the 15, but um, yeah. thank you, Andy. I'm sorry. Um, just a quick note on next meeting. I just wanted to, um, I mean, I was going to plan on doing it Zoom again. I just wanted to make sure everyone's comfortable with that. Yep. Do you want uh, us to work on a, a scenario or are you like a what? Anything, if, <laughs> anything if you, you want? Have, if you have time, Linda, that would be, I think, well, we've got um, David's slide showing the three prices if we do 10, 15 or 20 years. Right, if you do the million, you fall right in this hypothetical there on page four. So um, okay. there's no more work to do. <laughs> Does anyone but, um, want to see a little different than a mil like a million and a half? Or um, I guess, you know, I guess seeing what a million seven, if we funded the entire project would look like is, is probably a good thing to have as a comparison. And hopefully that's a quick calculation. Um, and you yeah. want that in advance of the next meeting? It's they had said they didn't come up with a million seven, they said a million six eleven four hundred. Um, so, and then they said they may need to take some of that back in their own budget, right? Well, or or did you say you told them not to worry about it? I'm not quite sh sure what your conclusion was. We, no. I guess our conclusion is next week, okay? Um, so, yeah, a lot of it is just getting us thinking all about the different angles and then, um you know doing, i'll send out that email that Stuart had done with some things to look at as well but um thank you so linda you'll let me know what analysis you'll need or are we right um well i'll have a probably um 
maybe Mary and I will be in touch over the next, we can email over the next few days and sort of settle out what would be helpful. Um, Okay. Um, what, what I was thinking of was not just the borrowing part, but comparing that. Let's, let's say we did the 10 years. I'm looking at, I have that up on my screen here. Take that 10 years with 118,000 a year and then see what our our annual is with almost about 300,000. That leaves 220 left for your other projects. Things like that, I think, make it a lot clearer that you're really not tying your own hands with the borrowing. I, I'd like to see a scenario where we do the whole 1.7 million and then another second scenario where we do just the 1 million and pay the 700 out, out front. Yeah. Those seem to be the two okay, most likely possible. So the one, 1 million 611. Yeah. Is what they're asking for. Of course, interest rates are going to go up, right? So uh, be a little bit more conservative than we are here, uh, depending on. Okay. We can, you know, I'll talk to Linda about kind of what the timing is, what we should assume as far as uh, how conservative we need to be on interest rates. Did, did you get from the school? Are they thinking that they would break? How soon this would happen? It wouldn't start for a full year, at least. It's 23, okay. 24. Well, the fiscal year 24, which is why they did the inflation factor. Okay. So they so would, they, they would do the work in fiscal 24? Right. You know that, that, that would mean we wouldn't borrow until fiscal 25. Right. So we're really three, we're, we're three years out from this. And, you know, the way we're you going, we're we'll keep money. building up that kitty of available funds. So taking right. the 700,000 seems even easier to do when we won't have it to. It does, doesn't it? Years. Yeah, right. it's, it does. So you're doing like 200,000 a year for the next, which is normal for you right. in the first three years and then the rest is borrowed. Yeah, it may not be, won't be bad. Well, thank you all. Good plan. Um, well, next time we'll discuss the projects about to expire and any votes needed um, to Good. return funds to the CPA and I'll come up with a warrant articles if we, you know, potential. Um, that, so we can look at that when we're voting. Um, right. And we'll do Zoom again. I'm not yes. really is not happy with it. And But thank you all for your attention and a little longer meeting than we try to have, but it was very helpful, um, Linda and David, to have you join us. I really appreciate your expertise.